Welcome to class two, assignment two, um, making a regional map with QGIS. For this assignment, we're going to be making a regional map using natural earth data and QGIS. Natural earth data is free and volunteer driven data set of the whole world. It's great for doing things that are regional or global not so great for doing things at a city scale. You need to go to naturalearthdata.com and go to the Downloads tab. And under here we have three scales of data. We have large scale data, which like large scale maps is more zoomed in. Small scale data is less zoomed in. The reason why the data is broken up this way is the small scale data is less precise. So you can't see too well here maybe. Um, maybe if I zoom in a little bit, um, you can see that the coastlines are more rough in the small scale data and better defined in the large scale data. In this case, we're going to be doing something regional, so I think you would be fine with large or medium scale data. I'm going to go with the large scale data. Under each scale, there are cultural and physical data sets. Cultural, maybe obviously, is things like place names and urban areas, things that humans have done. Uh, the physical side is more land, water, glaciated areas, things like that. And the easiest way to get going with this is just to go to both the cultural and the physical. And up at the top of the page, there's a button that's download all. And click download all. That's going to take a couple of minutes because it's about 200 megs. But that is the quickest way to get going with natural earth data. Make sure you do that for both cultural and physical at the large scale. Once you've got that, you might have a file a folder that looks like this once you unzip it. Um, I created a folder called Natural Earth in my file system and I've downloaded a bunch of Natural Earth in here. Um, way more than you're going to need for this assignment. You're probably just going to need these two. The 10M cultural and 10M physical. And if you open one of these and dig down you see a bunch of shapefiles. In class, we talked about shapefiles. I'm not going to get into it too much here. But basically, these four files that all have the same name but different extensions are part of one shapefile. QGIS is smart enough to be able to open a shapefile just by clicking on the SHP. So we're going to go over to QGIS. Make sure you have QGIS installed. You can get it at QGIS.org if you don't already have it installed, but I'm not going to cover that in this class, in this video, rather. Once you open QGIS, you'll have a window that looks a lot like this. Up at the top, you have the browser, and on the bottom, you have the layers. No layers yet. Um, the quickest way to get going in QGIS is go in, drill down to the folder with your data, right-click on it, and add as a favorite. Once you do that, it's always going to show up here under Favorites. And you can see that I have a data folder that happens to contain my natural earth data. So it's quick and easy to get to. Once you've done that, let's open up the Countries file. You can do that in this browser just by double-clicking on the shapefile. Bam, it's open. Um, as we talked about in class, you can style this to your heart's content. In this case, um, sorry, let me do that again. I double-clicked on it, and that will open the properties window for the layer. But you can right-click on it also and go down to properties. They both do the same thing. And um, the tab that's usually open is the style tab. And you can pretty easily go in and pick a color that you like for land. I want something maybe 
brownish. Mm. Mm. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much time doing this, but you have lots of options here. Okay, I picked one. I'm going to hit apply. And you can see that my countries now have a less offensive color. And we want labels, obviously, right? And um, you do that under the style tab, but before we get there, we need to open the attribute table. So I right clicked on the layer name and I came down here to open attribute table. When you do that, you get basically this big spreadsheet of data and each row in this data refers to one feature. And a feature is a geography, right? So if I click on one of these, in this case I clicked Afghanistan, you can see that it's highlighted. Um, we're going to talk more about selecting and looking at features in a later class and assignment. But for now, what's interesting about the attribute table is that you can find which column you want to use for labels. In this case, I know that there is a name column somewhere in here. There it is. So we have the name column. I'm going to escape out. You can hit escape or close. Escape's usually faster. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on the layer and go to labels. You have to check this box and click on this drop down and find that column that you want to use. Name. Where's name? There it is. Okay, so I selected name. When I hit apply, it's going to show the country names. And you can style this. I'm going to use this font, for example, and maybe make the color a little lighter. Hit apply, and you'll see that it's using our new font. I'm going to hit OK and close that. So our map now has a white background, which is kind of kind of ugly. And um, why don't we pick something more appropriate? Before we do that, we have to add the oceans. And you do that under the physical folder, because that oceans are a physical thing, not something that humans made up. Scroll down till you find the ocean shapefile and double click on it. And it picks a random color. In this case, it's kind of an appropriate color, but a little too bright for me. And I am going to take the lazy route this time and just select one of the presets. Hit apply, and that looks pretty good, actually. OK, uh, it would also be nice to label the oceans. And the way you would do that is add, this one's, this one always messes me up. It is geography, is it geography marine polys? I think it is. Okay, so, so with this does is it breaks the oceans up into areas. Um, that's not super useful in this case because we don't want lines between oceans. Really all we want is the labels. So I'm going to open the properties tab here and actually go into the simple fill and remove the fill and the borders. And when I hit apply, everything should disappear from this layer, which is great. And then I want to go to the labels, check that box, use the drop down to find the name, not name alt, 
but the name and hit apply great so now we see that um, we have oceans and seas labeled let's pick a slightly more appropriate color for the labels let's pick something blue that might be a little too neon dark is good though let's apply and see how that looks that's slightly better um, clearly this is this is up to you this is a stylistic thing but um, maybe it, make it a little bit smaller too okay there are lots of other things in here and I urge you to check it out um, one thing for example is the coastline you might want to include the coastline but clearly change the style a bit um, you could use basically the blue that we're using to style the labels try that and maybe look into other things here such as turning the transparency up a bit and um, and using some kind of blending mode so um, I'll try multiplying in this case so that's going to make the coastline interact with the underlying features um, okay now that I have this much done it's starting to look like a map and I'm going to scroll in zoom in to a region of my choosing in this case I'm going to pick this part of Asia um, I'm going to focus on this part of Asia and when I print my map I'll just make sure that I only get that part of Asia um, <clears throat> all right so what else should we add I think it can be nice to see urban areas and if you look under the cultural folder you can see that we can add urban areas um, and a land scan version um, although I'm not quite sure what land scan means in this case open up the attribute table hmm it seems very very crowded but that might be right okay so um, I guess I'm going to stick with the land scan if you're curious about what any of these are they usually have readmes that come with them so um, let's scroll down in the folder outside of QGIS scroll down 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 to urban areas land scan read me and double click on it and it'll open something in your folder um, So here you can read more about where the land scan data comes from and um, why they think it's useful. So there is a pop max column 
um, that they're saying could be useful and they'd let you know who creates the land scan data. Um, they convert raster to vector and pixels with fewer than 200 persons per square kilometer were removed from the data set. They were classified as rural. So we do know, having read the readme, that this is a pretty appropriate layer to be using. And now we just need to make it look more appropriate. Um, Usually, you basically want the land color, but maybe like a little darker, like this. <clears throat> and maybe we don't want the boundaries, the lines. And maybe we want to make it, um, so we could use things like textures in here. Um, I don't think it's going to be super useful here. I th I'm going to stick with a solid fill and change, um, let's see, change the opacity a little bit, maybe, which is down here, change the transparency to make it blend in a little bit better. Let's turn it way up, actually. Okay. That's, that's pretty much fine, I guess. Um, so we might want to add other things to this. So... For instance, we could add ports. And I encourage you to add as many of these as you find interesting to your map. Add them and, and see if they're useful. At least open them up and see. Um, you might, for a regional map, you might want to look at the admin one level, which is one down from country, so it's going to be states and provinces. Um, the easiest one is going to be this one, I believe. Whoa. Um, so, so that one, you want to pull that down a little bit under the land scan, or pull the land scan up. Either way, please. And um, I'm going to remove the fill on that. by going to the simple fill and saying no brush. But I'll leave the border. Maybe I'll downplay the border a bit. Um, and the simplest way to do that is just going to be to up the transparency here. That's slightly better. I think it gives us a better idea of the cultural landscape in this case. Um, depending on how far you're planning on zooming in, it might make sense to add the labels of these states and provinces. That's up to you. Um, let's look at railroads. Let's see the railroad networks. Let's see... Um, what else is helpful in here? We could look under the physical. It might be useful, depending on what you're doing, to see the graticules. So the graticules are uh, the latitude and longitude lines. Um, you might want to make that those graticules only show up but somewhere between the ocean and the land, for instance. So you could pull those graticules down here to below the land.
And you'd probably want to style those a bit to make them blend in even more. Um, so I know I'm making kind of an ugly map, but I expect a lot more from from your maps. I'm just showing you an example of of how this works. Um, okay. So let's say, for the sake of argument, that I'm pretty that I'm happy with this. If I'm happy with this map, um, okay, I was about to go into the print composer, but I thought I would look something up first. I, um, I haven't had an occasion to use this before, and I think it's pretty new in this version of QGIS, so I didn't know about it. Um, but it's, um, if you want to add some texture to your oceans, and I think, um, they often benefit from having a little bit of a distinction at the coastline. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. You can open up that layer, the oceans layer, click on the simple fill, and change the symbol layer type. Uh, there are a bunch of different ways you can go about this. There are gradients, there are um, you can fill just the centroid, which is the middle part. Um, but basically, I want to pick the shape burst. And what this does is it creates a gradient. Um, and you can say that that gradient should only last out, say, three meters, three millimeters, rather, from the edges. And I'm going to pick two colors for it, or maybe what's under the color ramp. Let's check the color ramp first. There might be like a good blues. Um, that's kind of dark. Yeah, that's a little too dark. But we can start, we can do something like that. So I'm going to go from white to, so white at the boundaries of the oceans to something bluish. like this. And when I hit apply, you'll see what I'm talking about. So at the edges, you can see that there's a little bit of, that it lightens up near the land. I think that looks pretty good usually. Um, but that's, that's absolutely something you should play with and try out. Okay, so now let's say I'm totally happy with how this is looking. I'm going to go into what just happened? Oh, I just selected something. I'm sorry. Um, so I just deselected that. Okay, so let's um, go to the print composer. It's under project, new print composer. Make sure you save this at some point so you can go in and change it, or maybe it crashes, or you want to print it, uh, you want to make another print composer for it later, um, I'll just save this on the desktop. Um, okay, so, um, so remember you go to Project Print Composer, New print composer, rather. Give it a name. And this gives us a big, big blank page. And I'm going to pick the Add a New Map tool on the left and draw a big box where I want my map to go. And it's going to put the map that we were just working on in this box. It's going to give us, uh, by default, it gives us the area that we were working with. And you can move item content if you click this, and this actually moves the content within the frame. It doesn't actually move the frame, it moves what's in it. So we can make this... Uh, I guess that's kind of good enough for what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> 
Okay, so uh, remember that you want to add things like a north arrow. Or maybe you're not super happy with that and you want an image. And there are some images for the north arrow in QGIS. So if you draw an area for it, um, let's see. Right, under search directories, you can scroll through this and find a north arrow. Uh, let's say, let's say I like this kind of classic compass rose. Um, there are a bunch of other things you can add. Oh, that one's kind of nicer. Okay, I'll pick that. And um, so there are lots of other options here. You can turn off the background. You can turn on or off a frame. Um, And you can also add a legend. In this case, there isn't much to add for a legend, except these urban areas. That's not going to be very obvious. Um, so let's go ahead and add a new legend. Draw a square. And you see that it adds all of our layers, and it shows how those layers are being um, symbolized. And over here on the right, Let's expand it a little bit so we can actually see what we're looking at. Um, you can go in and and delete the ones that you don't want to bother with. So ocean, that's obvious. The graticules, pretty obvious. Um, countries, also obvious. Pretty much everything except for the urban area, I'm going to say. Now, oops, I just deleted the legend. So I'm going to redraw it and delete everything but. Uh, I just did it again. Okay. So make sure you're not hitting the delete key because delete just deletes the thing that you're editing not the things that you have selected okay so I'm deleting that deleting the coastline and then I'm going to click the edit button on this one and say urban areas great and uh, you can change the the legend text here you can um, you can change the fonts to your heart's content. Please do. Um, usually you're going to want to keep... I don't know. You're going to want to... Place this in a way that makes sense for you. And maybe let's make the background a little bit less ugly here. Uh, hmm? Should be able to change the transparency. So one way you can change the transparency is by through the alpha channel. <clears throat> so I can reduce that a bit. That's something. Um, maybe I even want to change the color to make it more like the water. Eh, maybe not. Um, maybe. Probably not, though. I'm going to go back to white in this case. Um, 
and also add a label. Um, I'm going to keep it with my legend and say South Asia. Um, make sure that it's clear that it's the title, so make it a bit bigger. And turn off the background in this case and make it big enough that we can actually see it. Um, at this scale, I wouldn't bother with, with a scale bar, which would show you the distance um, represented. It's not going to help too much in this case. Um, so this isn't the greatest looking map I've ever made, but I think it gives you an idea of how this works with QGIS. I hope it's been informative for you. Um, one last thing, obviously you can you can save this project and you can export this as a PDF. And I'll do that on my desktop, call it SA. And once I do, I'm going to open it up, and you see this map that we made together. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing which regions you pick to, do, to use and what you make natural earth data do. There's a lot in there. There's a lot of potential. Um, use it as an opportunity to learn as much as you can about styling things with QGIS um, and, and learning how to bring layers in and layer them. Um, using the NYC data, it's going to be comparable, but it's not going to be quite as easy because you're not um, just downloading data that's already prepackaged for you. You're going to have to find some data and style it appropriately. But otherwise, the process in QGIS is going to be pretty similar. So um, let me know if you need any help with any of that.